Okay, let's talk about SummerSlam. So this show was really good for about uh, an hour and a half, and then it became an old-school uh, Vince McMahon, Kevin Dunn, excruciatingly long, 85,000 video packages, dudes coming out to fake the attendance, insufferably long ring entrances, the whole nine yards. But it started out really good. Old Man River. I was so He's excited. Old Man River. I was so excited when this show started because it's the first Triple H pay per view. <laughs> and literally, the show starts and Becky's music hits. They didn't have a video package. We didn't have 15 minutes of rigmarole. It was like they got her down to the ring. Then they got Bianca down to the ring. And then they had a very, very good match. And they got 15 minutes. And Bianca beat her clean in the middle after going back and forth. And then when it's over, Bailey's music hits. So Bailey comes down the aisle. And then Dakota Sky, who had been fired, she got rehired. She comes down the aisle. And then the music hits and out comes the former Io Shirai, who is now Io Sky, which like a lot of people are, are furious about, but... Listen, everybody, this is it's some of this is a Vince thing, like when Vince gets weird about, you know, I don't want anyone to be called junior. OK, but I'm sure that Nick Khan and Stephanie, they're probably the ones behind. Listen, we got to brand these people. They all have to have a new name. We don't want them leaving and using their WWE name somewhere else. Everybody's going to get a new name. And Io Shirai was the queen of the sky. Right. That was her gimmick. So yeah. now she's Io Sky. I don't think this is the end of the world. I don't know why everybody is up in arms about this one. You should be happy that she got immediately signed to a main roster contract and got called up the second Vince was out of there. should be happy about that. Who cares what her name is? That's you can true. call her Hot Dog Ferguson for all I care. She's on the main roster and she's going to be wrestling. So they came out and I was like, my God, look at this. He brought back Dakota. He brought up EO. Bailey's back. Becky has turned babyface. She's a babyface again, thank God. Bianca beat Becky and is a big, huge star. Like, this women's division is on fire. It's the first thing that happened on SummerSlam. I was over the moon with joy. Then Logan Paul beat The Miz in a good match. 15 minutes. And, you know, Logan Paul looked great at WrestleMania, but, bro, he's in there with, uh, you know, Rey Mysterio and... and uh, but this was a singles match with The Miz, who is not renowned for his singles matches. Hey. And they he's not. And they had a good match. Logan Paul beat him. He did so much impressive stuff that, believe it or not, they actually cheered Logan Paul beating The Miz. He was a baby face when this was over. We'll see how long that lasts. But uh, a good match. Give The Miz credit. He may not be great when it comes to your average everyday wrestling match, but when it comes to these celebrity type of deals, he is very, very good. And he did his job with Logan Paul perfectly, including getting that crowd to turn the heat back on himself. More SummerSlam after this break, everybody. This commercial break to pay the bills for this national radio show, which is called Wrestling Observer Live. Observer.com. Where were we? Well, Hot Dog Ferguson. Bobby Lashley in theory... Oh. Man, I got a love-hate relationship with the way they book Theory on this show because I'm sick of the guy. I'm glad that he didn't win the title. But, golly, holy smoke and moles. After, after having to sit through 45 minutes of Austin Theory segments on every show for the last month, what was the payoff? Should I add all that time up? 90 minutes a week for four weeks, 360 mm. minutes. Yes. That's six, uh, six hours of Austin Theory I sat through for the last month. Six hours? And what was the payoff? Well, he faced Bobby Lashley. Lashley squashed him, beat him with a hurt lock in five minutes. Then, as we'll get to later, it was awesome. during the main event, he ran out. <laughs> this idiot, <laughs> God bless the guy, but in storyline, he's an idiot. This idiot sees Roman Reigns down. And he decides, now's a great time to cash in. He runs down to the ring. Brock's right there. But bam <laughs> Kills him. He's dead. That was the whole Austin Theory gimmick on this show. 
in a last man standing match. All he had to do was wait till both guys were down, then run down and do that, I guess, and hit both in the head. If he can join mid-match like he was planning on doing, he could have waited to see what would have happened. But no. So no. I, I liked, you know, there was the aspect of me that liked that they didn't do anything with him on the show. But there was the aspect of me that was like, God, I, I sat through six hours for nothing. And now there's the aspect of, well, now he's still got the briefcase. We're going to keep going. Somebody, by the way, had a great idea, which uh, it doesn't really work because you don't actually have to give the contract to the referee. But uh, after the briefcase was obliterated, they were like, man, you know, Roman should get beat up and he's down and he's he's dead. And Theory goes to cash in, but he tries to open the briefcase, but it's jammed shut because it's been smashed so badly in the last man standing match and he can't cash in. Uh-huh. That, uh yeah. Anyway. You know, you're not you're not looking at the uh, theory Lashley thing with the fact that Lashley didn't have to lose at any point to Austin Theory with the way that theory has well, been. I'm certainly booked. happy that Bobby Lashley's a champion. The guy's super yeah. over. The fans love him. Exactly, and it and it looked awesome with him doing the roll into the ring and jumping up and then getting caught in the press slam down into the full Nelson. I thought that was that was cool. So I have no issue with this. You're going to have theory crammed down your throat anyway. So at least again, I don't know. Let's see how it goes tonight. They have made him look like a goofball. And yes, they made him look like less of a goofball in some ways, I guess, on Sunday night. But I, I, if it continues on TV, they have got to be doing the thing where they're tearing him down to build him back up again. Because otherwise, like, tonight should be the night Theory starts actually, like, kicking some ass and not being such a geek. Because Drew comes out there, he's a star. Bobby Lashley's a star. Roman Reigns is a star. You know, Brock Lesnar's a star. They're looked at as stars. Even Riddle, you know, Orton. Uh, who's not there, but Rollins, those guys, all of them are looked at, I think, in a better light than Theory is, and people believe in all of those other people far more than Austin Theory. So at some point, he's your guy of the future. You need to build stars. Let's start getting it going and actually making this guy a serious figure. We had the Mysterios beating the Judgment Day in a no disqualification match when, as expected, Edge returned. Who is not, by the way, the Fiend? He returned. He helped the Mysterios win. He's a babyface. And I was watching the match, and he came back, and I thought, my God, with his new haircut and everything like that? I was like, this guy looks exactly like DDP, and he moves like him, too. And then, Scott's my witness, I saw DDP the next day on the uh, Ric Flair's last match show, and it was uncanny. So. Yoga? He should be doing yoga. If Edge is not doing yoga now, he should because it's done wonders for old uh, DDP. Uh, Pat McAfee beat Happy Corbin. It was all right. It was not a great Pat McAfee match. Uh, he was sloppy on a lot of things. It wasn't a bad match at all. I mean, it was, you know, the match they did was was like a, you know, it was a good match. I'd say it was pretty good. But he did, he was sloppy on things and... He looked like a green wrestler as opposed to before when he was like an outsider who blew you away with how good he was. Now that he's been doing matches, now he's going to be judged, and this will happen to Logan Paul as well, to the same standards of everybody else in the company. And uh, this was not a, a great uh, Pat McAfee performance here. Yeah, but to be fair, for a lot of people that didn't see it, it's not like this was a Botchamania type of match because McAfee's such a great athlete. He was actually able to overcome it, like, you know, jumping up and he lands on his knees on the ropes, but then he's back up on his feet. And the wobble when he was going to do the dive to the outside, which, you know, that was, you know, the Taurus, <laughs> was it Taurus and Bandito? No, it was Taurus and... Uh... Oh, God, during the pay-per-view where he, he saved a man from breaking his neck. That dive by McAfee, I wish Corbin was a little bit more underneath him because, e. Okay, I should, uh, I should mention here very quickly that uh, I am not 100% confirming this, but since everybody is asking about it, I do have one source who is saying that, yes, Sasha and Naomi have made a deal to return. So we'll know more, I'm sure, within two hours but I'll just say I think it's true. I'm pretty sure. But I can't say uh I can't say one hundred percent. And if anybody else at all at Brian Alvarez, he loves answering questions about the boss. No, don't start this stuff. <laughs> 
Uh, we had the Usos beating the Street Profits. And they just beat them. <laughs> it was, so I think I think they must be splitting them up. No. Which is a funny story. But I, I don't I told the story on the Brian and Vinny show, but essentially like eh, it's a long story. Can they both go heel then? If that's what this is about, because Why obviously would they break up and both go heel. Because I would rather just have them somehow break up because I want to see Angelo Dawkins with MVP, so he has somebody besides almost and I don't think Montez Ford needs anyone. And I just, I would rather see it that way than have Montez, the way this is being framed right now, turn on Dawkins. And then, I don't know. Dawkins is, look, he's gotten a lot better. And I think he can be something. He's big. There's a, a really an upside to him. But I would love to see him with MVP as somebody I think that, Again, it helps out MVP immensely, too, by just having almost around. And you could actually, I can think of Dawkins and, like, Bobby Lashley would be something I would like to see. Liv Morgan versus Ronda Rousey. They got, like, four minutes. They got their time cut. I was told because of Logan Paul and The Miz. But they just, it was Ronda putting in one arm bar after another. Liv kept getting the ropes. Ronda got mad. Finally, she puts her in a straight arm bar. And Liv Morgan taps, but the referee is counting Ronda's shoulders. And so even though Liv Morgan tapped out before the pinfall, only the pinfall counted because that's what the referee saw. So Liv retained the title. And then Ronda beat up Liv, which is a heel move. Then she beat up the babyface, which was a babyface move. So we'll find out tonight or Friday. The referee. Or the referee. What did I say? The babyface. Yeah, well, Beating up the baby face is not a baby face move. Well, it's a baby face ref. Beating up the ref is a baby face move. But uh, we're going to find out tonight or Friday what the deal is with Rousey. But I think everybody knows the WrestleMania big match is going to be Ronda Rousey versus Becky Lynch. And if Becky Lynch is going baby face, Ronda Rousey should be turning heel sooner rather than later. She should just have done it anyway, for sure. And then uh, Roman Reigns and Brock Lesnar, last man standing. Tables, chairs. A tractor, a tractor that was used as a forklift to uh, elevate the ring and, you know, Roman Reigns tumbled out of it, which led to uh, exactly one half of the people who paid for front row tickets being unable to see the rest of the match because there was a ring. It was worth it. It was worth it. And uh, I liked it. I mean, (laughs) you know, some people didn't like it. I I was I was I'll put it this way. Vinny really didn't like the match. Okay, I was watching with Vinny. At the time. I was very irritated watching the match because there had been an hour, with the exception of the Ronda Rousey Liv Morgan five minute match, it was an hour of videos, entrances. Here comes Kane to lie about the attendance. Another video. Here's Roman Reigns taking six minutes to walk to the ring. Here's Brock Lesnar taking twelve minutes to drive a tractor. I'm like, bro, I'm. It's hot in this room. Get the show on the road, dude. So as I'm watching, I'm, I'm irritated. But then, you know, after it's over, and then you think back about what they actually did, I liked the match. You know, it was fun. They did all sorts of crazy things. They're teasing that it's the last time they'll ever wrestle, which this is a key. Because I've been right a lot, and people don't like to acknowledge it. I realize we've seen this match seven times. I realize that if somebody gets hurt, y'all think they're going to go back to Brock Lesnar and Roman Reigns, okay? I know you all think that. But listen, Vince is gone. He's done, okay? He's gone. They don't need to ever go back to this match again. Someone else in charge can find somebody else to face Roman Reigns or whoever. And if you don't believe me, if you don't believe me, I believe that Paul Heyman, who is a really smart guy who's been around the block, I believe that he believes that this is the last time they're ever doing a match because that dude took an F5 through a table. And he ain't doing that if he thinks in three months they're just going to do this match again. So I think everybody believes, and I think there's actually a very good chance that we don't ever see this match again, okay? And they pulled out all the stops. They destroyed ringside. They killed everybody. So uh, I thought it was fun. I think we could see this match again, but not for a few years and not until a WrestleMania. 
I don't even think they'll break this one out in, if the Saudis ask for it. You know what I'm saying? I, I think it's better at this point. The Look, Saudis already saw it at least once. Well, you know, again, if they wanted to pay for it again, like I wouldn't even put that one on the table because it's one of those things you have where, God bless them, if their bodies don't break down, I bet you in like three years, four years, Brock still looks pretty much the same. And even if he didn't, who cares? It would be Brock Lesnar if he came out there with a gigantic beer gut, but an even bigger hat. Nobody would give a crap because it's Brock. Roman's probably going to look the same in like four years. You could go back to it then. There are too many other people. There are too many other things you need to do and build up. And there are far, <laughs> there are just a ton of other ideas out there. Roman's still your champion. Brock is still Brock. Paul got laid out, which was awesome. And the match was a spectacle and it wasn't all that great, but it, the whole show, it was okay. But the spectacle aspect of it is what made it for me, even with the time, even with it being long and all that stuff. It wasn't a great wrestling show, but as far as WWE goes, when you have Logan Paul and you have the Mysterios winning clean and like a lot of that stuff, well, I guess not clean with Edge, but regardless, look, I thought it was a decent enough night. If you're trying to put it up against Tokyo Domes or old manias or something like that, like... I don't know what to tell you, you know, but it's it's this is WWE now and prepare for two or three celebrities if they can fit them in on every tent pole show. Guaranteed. Rusty. Rusty Rose. Ten four eighty six. <laughs> dusty. Is it Rusty or Dusty? <laughs> it's uh, it's Dusty. Harmon Blanchett. <laughs> OK, out of ring. Her, and, her Herman and Blanchett. <laughs> Harlan. Way back then, they had cha chain barricades. <laughs> and then they had a tag team with Rich Fl uh, Rick Flair and some more guys. And so that was that. I'm just too who, who did Rusty Rhodes wrestle? If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.